So the last time we talked, um, we actually made a trip out uh, in the middle of February with a group of about six UNC students. Um, we met up with the Association of Student Government um, presidents from across the state. Most of them were there. Um, I think every school sent uh, a delegation. And we actually walked around. We met the new Republican leadership, um, and we met with some of the returning Democrats. And um, the event itself was, was really good. I think that what we got from it was uh, a lot of sophomores and juniors went with us and had the ability to meet um, legislators and, and hopes that next year uh, Mary as the new student body president can really call upon sort of a prepared team. Um, this year we really spent time training students and getting them ready um, and I think it's it's pretty evident that that was important but next year they really need to hit the ground running in Raleigh pretty quickly. Um, we're probably gonna have one more uh, trip to Raleigh before I leave office and that will include Mary and her team and whoever else she wants to bring to so it'll be sort of a collaborative Medlin and Cooper administration presence, and then hopefully that will give her a good um, a, a, a good start to her uh, lobbying in Raleigh. Well, I saw you at the um, election results on Friday night. How was that for you? Because you've been through yeah. the same the same process. Was it a little bit bittersweet and nostalgic? Well, you? the process of my year was a little bit different, I'll have to say. Um, <laughs> we didn't have an injunction, <laughs> so we actually got to find out the results on time. Um, but, you know, it, it was absolutely nostalgic. You know, it was the same room, sort of the same setup with one campaign on one side, one cam campaign on the other. Um, and I was talking to, to a friend standing beside me last Friday night who said, you know, what are you, what are you feeling right now? And the only thing I could say was... Uh, uh, I'm just I'm taken back to the moment uh, last year um, when when we won and it was uh, I mean I, I I don't even think I knew then how much my life had changed in that one moment and I, I I'm sure Mary doesn't know either but um, it's such an exciting thing and I am thrilled for Mary and her team and um, I think we're uh, we're turning it over and, and leaving student government in good hands. So I sat Mary down. Um, the very next day. So she was elected Friday night. Saturday we spent from 1 to 4 together. Um, and I told her you know, that, that was going to be typical, um, where we spent a lot of time together. Um, Jasmine and I spent a lot of time together um, going over various sort of thematic or topical uh, issues. And we're going to do the same, except probably even more so, because there's so many things that um, Mary is going to be getting that are already in motion, and she needs to pick it up and run. And, uh, lobbying is really a good example. Um, the arts platform is something else that she's gonna. Um, she's really excited to take on, and I'm, I'm excited that she wants to continue so the, the stuff we've been working on. But um, what we did was on Saturday we actually sat down and plotted out um, the next two to three weeks of our of our lives together, and um, we're meeting almost every single day. And then when we come back from spring break, um, we'll actually be in the process of helping her select her, her executive officers, the vice president, the secretary, treasurer, chief of staff, and um, senior advisor. And those applications are actually out right now and are due March 6th, this coming Sunday. Um, so for anyone that wants to apply, make sure you check it out on our website um, and apply for the Cooper administration. All right. So you've gone through the transition process <coughs> yourself from being the SVP elect to being the actual SVP. Mm. Um, from your experience, what do you think is going to be the most challenging thing for Mary at this point? I think um, if I can reflect upon my own experiences and maybe how that would translate for Mary, um, I think it's unique every single year. And I think that every student body president experiences their own transition and their own coming into the office. Um, and then really what's interesting is what happens after the inauguration until exams. That window of time right there is, is inherently different than the rest of your term because it's, uh, you're putting your team together, you're getting your cabinet ready, you're getting sort of the executive branch structured the way you want it to be structured, and then you leave for the summer, or, or, or the student body leaves for the summer. Um, and, and so then you've got to really figure out, well, how can I make the most of my time during the summer months to get everything that I can either started or even complete some projects over the summer or um, build the relationships with the town that is sort of a common theme for every summer, get to know the mayor, the town uh, manager, and the council, et cetera. Um, and so I think for, for me, the, one of the hardest things was understanding the, the, the gravitas, if you will, of the position, understanding that the student body president, um, everyone wants your time. Everyone wants to meet with you. Everyone wants to, 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 to give you their agenda and see what you think about that. And that ranges from students to administrators to senators to um, board of governors. You know, it's, it's amazing, actually. Um, the amount of, of um, emphasis that is placed on the student body president to represent the students of Carolina. And I think uh, it's, it's definitely, like, I think you come into the, to, into the position knowing that student body president is important. But until you start receiving 80 emails a day from anyone at, at all asking to meet with you, um, you've got to really start to figure out the balance between 
uh, pursuing your own agenda and then also meeting the needs of, of, of the Carolina community. And I think that's really important. And um, it takes some time to figure out. Um, and it's not really something that I can even transition Mary into. Um, it's not something that can, one president can pass down to the next. It's really an experiential learning kind of thing. Um, and so I think that will be and, and inevitably the, the greatest challenge probably for any student body president is coming in, organizing, organizing the executive branch in a way that's going to meet the needs of your administration while also balancing that initial f uh, wave of everyone wanting to meet with you. Great. So are there going to be any <coughs> projects that you pass on to Mary that you know, either you started or you are continuing from past student body presidents? Absolutely. Um, so we've already talked about lobbying, and that's really not my project. That's just something that um, I think we've laid a good foundation for, and she's going to be able to pick up. Um, I mentioned briefly earlier the arts. Um, we have been working on creating sort of a, um, a platform for the university to really move the arts forward. Um, and that will be available in about three weeks for the Board of Trustee meeting. Um, and will uh, culminate with uh, a presentation that I'm giving to the trustees about where I think the arts should be headed. And, and it can't stop after that presentation. Um, it really needs to, um, the, the ideas that we're coming up with, um, one of them specifically is, a, is an endowment fund to fund um, student art innovation projects. And I've already had a conversation with Mary about this. She's actually really excited. It was in her platform to continue it. So um, inevitably, that will be something that she sort of helps champion and, and, and bring into existence next year. Um, again, we laid a lot of groundwork for that. A lot of administrators were on board um, and trustees as well. And so it's really exciting, actually. It's just one of those things that I can say, you know, we've done this. And, and this is uh, a sort of a Medlin administration um, uh, product, if you will and something we can give to the next president that doesn't necessarily require a lot of original thought or, or a lot of their time, but rather we, we've almost laid it out for here's how you can succeed in, in, in accomplishing these goals. So we're really excited to give that one to Mary. And then the um, other one that comes to mind uh, right off the bat is the Admissions Ambassador Abroad Program. Um, we are piloting, piloting that this semester in China. Um, we have a student who's studying abroad who's pairing with an alum to do a, a presentation in a local boarding school um, or high school equivalent, and, uh, and uh, I think it's in in Hong Kong to um, to essentially make a presentation about Carolina in hopes that we can increase the diversity of our international student applicants and hopefully one day uh, increase the cap of international students to the university because I, I personally believe and I think a lot of students do too that the value that we get from having international students in our classrooms and our student organizations on our campus in general um, provides such a unique perspective and, and really enhances the quality of our education and um, and so again, we've already we have a model in place. We're piloting it right now. It's being very successful. Um, we will want to branch out and extend that to another city, more than likely London. Um, and uh, that will be something where we'll need Mary's support. The president's power really is in persuas persuasion. Um, how can you convince someone that the ideas in your platform and that the things that you want to do um, are, is what should happen? How can you be persuasive? Um, it's not necessarily that the president has such authority that things just happen. That's really not how it works. It's it's the ability to talk um, to a trustee, to an administrator, to a student organization even, and, and be uh, convincing in such a way that they believe in what you believe in and, and, and you see sort of a mutual benefit for students. Um, and, and from that, you can move projects forward. And so we're really excited to work with Mary in passing those three specific things on. People elected her because of who she is, her personality, um, her ideas are solid, um, but the people who, who, who looked at this election and chose who they wanted um, I think Saul Mary is a very genuine person and someone who can represent this university with integrity um, and with a heart. And I think that we all want that. And I know that university needs it, um, especially in a time when we're having such terrible budget cuts. Um, you know, if, if we can have a student body president that remains enthusiastic and, and, uh, and positive and uh, someone that the students can look to, to to represent them, I think she'll do a great job. So be yourself. We have one more interview before uh, I'm out of office, and so we'll definitely cover a lot of ground then about uh, wrapping the year up and, and, and the final transition material for Mary.